So I've got two meshes here using completely automatic settings. So you would you would take a coarse mesh for your first one. You can select a different number of cores because as we're using cloud solving computers, you can select a different number of cores that you want this thing to run on. But as this is only a small a, a small mesh, I'm not going to go up to 16 cores. Okay, so I've got a coarse mesh and I've also created a fine mesh. So my fine mesh has, um, I've made sure that it's got at least a few elements across the thickness of thin parts. So then we can be pretty sure that we're going to get some um, reasonably accurate stress results across these parts. Next, once we've created our mesh, we need to stick the model together. So that's done using contacts. Now, in this, in this geometry, we've got five parts and then also the ground. So, so we, don't need to, we don't need to stick the, the ground to anything, but we need to, to attach all of these components together. And what I've done is I've applied bonded contacts. So that's just as though they were, um, they're, they're rigidly stuck together. So those nodes can't um, separate from each other. Um, so I've applied that between these, these rubber, the rubber ear parts and the aluminium um, electronics bodies, I guess you'd call them. Yeah. And um, then I've used sliding contacts between the, the headpiece and the electronics bodies. Okay, so on both sides there. And you can use a sliding contact when, um, when we're looking at, when the rotation, the expected rotation is is going to be less than sort of 5%. And then we can say that a sliding contact is going to work pretty well in this kind of analysis. Anything larger than that, we might need to assign a real physical contact. Um, but for this scenario, the expected um, rotation at these points isn't very large. Okay? And I'll show you that in the results. So, so I'll, I'll try and prove it to you. 